PVL is the most common, common cause of motor impairment in the premature infants. The periventricular regions are crossed by the cortical spinal tracts, which contain descending myelinated fibers, serving as the main output pathways for the motor cortex. Fibers within the cortical spinal tracts interconnect with the basal ganglion, brainstem, and cerebellum, with all areas contributing to normal, purposeful motor movement. And here's just an example of the part of the brain most susceptible to this type of injury, just adjacent to the lateral ventricles within the cerebral cortex. And as a reminder, this is the exact area through which the corticospinal tracts pass. Motor fibers to the lower body and lower extremities are located medial within the corticospinal tracts, placing them intimately within the periventricular regions and at risk for PVL. Even mild degrees of hypoxic injury to the periventricular regions will affect the medial motor fibers within the corresponding corticospinal tracts, resulting in functional gross and fine motor problems involving the lower extremities. When this occurs, the injury that you could predict would be spastic diplegia. More extensive insults to the periventricular region affect motor fibers placed more laterally within the corticospinal tracts and controlling the upper body and upper extremities. Such insults result in spastic quadriplegia and cerebral palsy. As an injury moves even more laterally within the corticospinal tracts, motor fibers affecting eye and facial movements and swallowing also become involved. And this is just kind of a graphical representation of the corticospinal tracts that are involved as you move medially next to the lateral ventricle out more laterally. How we move from involvement of just the feet and the trunk to then begin to involve the hands, upper extremities, use of the fingers, face, lips, and tongue, and all the associated activities. 